quick disclaimer, um, I'm fairly new to speedrunning and I'm still learning a lot of the basics. Um, but mapless is something that I would like to say I fairly confidently have down. And it was one of the things that I struggled with a fair amount. So uh, I just hope this video can help somebody else who was who is uh, where I was a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, so yeah, like I said, keep in mind, I'm not the best speedrunner, and I, I don't even have a, a personal best yet. Like, I'm very, very new to this, but um, I'd like to say that I understand Mapless enough to teach others. Okay, um, this is a tutorial on how to do Mapless Buried Treasure, um, because I found a lot of the guides that were on YouTube when I was trying to learn how to do it were very... A lot of them were, were, were good, but they lacked some comprehension on certain parts of um, how to do it. So we're going to pull up our pie chart by holding shift and F3 at the same time. I'll go back to the beginnings because this is what your pie chart will look like uh, at the very beginning. You're going to press the number that corresponds with game renderer. On the bottom right, you see words game renderer, level, entities, and then you're here. Right, so this is the pie chart that you want right here. Um, so also I would recommend turning on chunk borders, which is done by holding F3 and G. Um, so F3 and G to toggle it on and off. So once you have it on, it'll look like this. Um, you can see just the walls of chunks. So you can see what where a chunk starts and where it ends pretty much. Um, we're gonna pull up the pie chart here. Um, we're gonna be looking at the orange sliver that correlates with the, the word block entities so block entities are spawners chests uh, beds a bunch of other stuff like that anything that's like an important block or like has an animation usually is a block entity also one thing I forgot to say in the beginning here um, I'm in a new world to show you you're gonna want if, if you pull up your pie chart and it's already a spike like this you're going to want to try and find a spot where it's just a sliver right Sometimes it might be big and then you have to look over here and refresh it and it'll it'll instantly go back down. So instead of having to wait for it to go all the way back down like this, you can just refresh it and it'll go down. Um, so you want to try and identify a spot that it's not like a very big sliver. So we're going to turn on our pie chart and we are we're going to look to one direction, either either left or right very slowly so we'll we'll start out turn it on we're going to start looking right very slowly of course you can do this faster once you have it down but you're going to do it slowly just to learn and you're going to keep going until you see a spike in the where the orange uh sliver is so once it starts to get bigger we're going to stop Well, yeah, right here is the sliver. Uh, okay, it's where the sliver got bigger, sorry. Um, so let's go back here, because this is right before, and we go, see, it starts getting bigger. As soon as the, the far right of our screen is right here, right? This is where the far right of our screen was. If you're doing it on the left side, it'll look like this. So you start here, go left very slowly, very slowly very slowly very slowly and just keep going until it starts to spike it starts to spike a little bit there keep going so it, it spiked whenever the corner of our screen was right there right so what's on the corner of our screen right here so what's the what's the common denominator between when we were looking right and it spikes here and we're looking left and it spikes here well this chunk right here this one is the common denominator because the corner of the screen is this was the corner of the screen on both sides this chunk right here um, I believe also on the corner the this further chunk is on that one but it's not on this one so you can kind of very like fairly easily determine that this is the this chunk is is the common denominator between the two so this is the, the the chunk that both of the corners of the screen were on on each side when we tried it right you can typically if you if you have 
good practice uh, with this. You can just do it based off of one side. Um, so we'll start here, go right, and boom. This is the corner of our screen right here, this chunk. So we know it's in this chunk. So what do we do now to find out which block that the buried treasure is at? Um, we need to use our F3 menu again. So up here in this corner, we see these numbers 10, 15, and 4. And it says chunk next to it. So what do these numbers mean? These are your coordinates within the chunk. So it's the same as your X, Y, and Z, but it's only within this chunk. So this, this, this cube, right? So um, something to know about buried treasure is that it always appears at the chunk coordinates 9, 9. So one way to think about it uh, with, with this little thing in the middle, the red, uh, green, and blue that replaces your crosshair whenever you press F3, if you're moving along the red line, your first number, which is your X coordinate within the chunk, is going up. Also, this will go up, your, your regular X coordinate. If you're going down, like uh, away from it, your coordinate will go down. See how, how this is moving up when I go this way, down when I go this way. Same thing with blue. If you go up, follow it, this coordinate goes up, and if you go backwards, it goes down. Same with this coordinate. Uh, the one in the middle is just your Y coordinate, which is how high up you are. See if we go up, boom, boom. Yeah, I think most people probably know that already. So we're gonna go in here, see how our chunk coordinate is zero and six. So we're gonna go this way, along the red line until we get to nine because like I said buried treasure always spawns at nine nine within the chunk and then we're gonna go follow the blue line for me at least it, it might be different for you depending on what these two numbers say and we get to nine so now we're at nine nine this middle number doesn't really matter so much we will go down right and then boom buried treasure um, so yeah, that's how you do map list more or less. Uh, one thing also to keep in mind, um, I have seen, I'm not sure if they can go further than this, but I, I have seen buried treasures that are up to four, four blocks deep. So you have to do one, two, three, and it'll be this fourth one. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if it can be another one deep. Uh, you might have to do some testing on that or search it up. I'm sure you can find that somewhere. Um, but yeah, so recap. Um, you're going to want to pick a direction that you're going to want to move when, you, when your sliver's low. And you're going to move that way slow enough that you can recognize where the spike is. So it spiked. Then we're looking. This is the far right of our screen. This is the far, furthest corner of our screen when it spiked. Boom. See? Right here left it would look like this spikes boom this this chunk is the common denominator from both usually you can just use one and oh it spiked well it's in this chunk right um and then you're gonna go pull up your f3 menu look at these numbers red is your x blue is your uh, z uh, moving up one increases the number going down one decreases the number so you're going to go within the chunk, look at these coordinates, figure out if you have to go up or down with the first number, X. We're going to go up for me, end up at 9, blue number, end up at 9 because buried treasure always spawns at 9, 9 within the chunk. Go down, boom, mine whatever block is there, and we found the buried treasure. So in a bit faster time, it will look something like this. Um, it's not loading. <laughs> okay, here we are. So it's a small sliver. I, I usually go right, so I'm going to use right. Um, recap again. Uh, we're going to start game director level uh, entities. Uh, for me, I use standard settings, which um, if we go in, in standard settings, standard settings is a mod, but it's allowed within uh, speedrunning. And if we go in here and search up Pi, I have it on game renderer level entities. So whenever I pull up my pie, pie chart, it always says game renderer 
level entities. It's always it's already done that pathing, so I don't have to do it every time. So that whenever I load up in a run, I can just yeah. So uh, sliver small. We're gonna look right. Oh, boom. This chunk is where it started to spike up. We can start from the left as well. Small. Small. Got bigger looking over here. So we're going to go over here. Look this way. You can test it as well, like in the middle of it. So over here. And... Wow, it's staying big the whole time. You know what that means? We are in the chunk. Typically, that means that we are in the chunk. So you go to 9 9, dig down. I bet you there's some buried treasure here. There is. Beautiful. Um, if you're experienced with it, you can kind of just. You don't have to check again. You can kind of just like. You do it faster at least. You, you still want to recheck, but. You're doing it a lot faster than I was doing it for the example. Um, so let's start over here. Uh, okay, boom. It's spiked up there, so probably over here. So sometimes it's hard to tell, right? Because... Oh, wow. Okay, well, that's crazy. Okay. So we look right. Sometimes you might get tricked because you might have thought that that was where it picked up, right? But no, we can already see that chunk right now and it's not spiked. Look a bit more right. It's spiked. It's starting to go up, right? It'll keep going up, right? But where did it start? Right here. And what can we see on our screen? This chunk. Let's do it from this side. We don't see it. Go here. Oh, what's on the side of our screen? This chunk. Okay. I don't these aren't pre-placed. I don't know where these are before I start. Like I'm just I'm just doing it. Like live. So nine nine within the chunk. Wow, there's a buried treasure right here. Um it's not always gonna be this close. That was a terrible example. Okay, boom. Uh it's not that big. So we look left until we get a spike. Wow, we got a spike. So where was the spike? Right here. Right, so what was on the corner of our screen? This chunk? No, so it's not this chunk because we're looking into this chunk right now. We can see it, and there's not a spike yet. Right, there's not really a spike, and we can already see this. So we keep looking right. Oh, now it's spiked. What can we see? This chunk over here, kind of? Yeah. Look left. Oh, it just started. So I have a feeling it's in this chunk over here. Right? We can't see it right now, but we look here, we can. So I have a feeling it's in this chunk. We're going to look around. If your pie chart stays, like, f where it is, like, fairly, um, if it stays fairly large, you're probably in the chunk. Uh, sometimes it's tricked me before, and I wasn't in the chunk when I thought I was. So we're going to go to 9, 9. Boom. I, I'm fairly confident there's a barely treasure here. Like I said, sometimes you have to dig down kind of far. And, yeah. Very treasure. Boom. I'm loading that slow, obviously, but, yeah. Also, this is where I was in the very beginning of the video when I said, uh, find the small sliver. So we're going to start right here. Uh, I just recorded that part. Um, so we're going to look left and slowly do it. Just slowly until we see. A spike, but there's no spike. So what does that mean? Well, this is something that I, I didn't cover yet. If there's no spike, you're not close enough to the buried treasure. See, in this chunk, we're still not close enough to the buried treasure, so we're going to go this way. And now we're going to look this way and try and do our PIDAR again. Wow, would you look at that? There's a there's a spike. So we just started looking over that way. Oh, that way. So I would like to say that it's probably over here in not this chunk, not this chunk. 
but likely this chunk, I would like to say. Uh, also, is this 9 9? No, it's not. Okay. Um, so let's look over this way and see if we can get it to go down. Oh, would you look at that? We can't. So I'm fairly confident that within this chunk, there's a buried treasure. So we're going to go 9. Uh, 9. Remember, here. Boom. Like I said, sometimes you just have to dig down. and it, it, You're in water and it's slow. I, I know it sucks, but... Um, yeah. But yeah, cool. A lot of top speedrunners will use something called a thin screen to help them find buried treasure more easily. The reason that this works is because if you limit what's on your screen... It's much easier to tell which chunk gave you a spike. So, uh, I'm going to press my, my keybind to set it to thin screen. The menu, uh, sorry, the screen that you're seeing on the far left is my entire screen right now. Um, I'm seeing the same thing you're seeing. So, this is <clears throat> uh, all I see. So, we're going to start right here where there's not much of a... Um, there's not a very big sl sliver. And we're going to look left until there's a spike. So what was I looking at when there was a spike? Right over there, there was a spike. We're going to look over here. Right over here. So I I'm confident in saying that the buried treasure is likely within this chunk over here. Not this one, not this one. But this one. Right, so now we're going to turn off our thin screen. Uh, look around. Remember how I said if your pie chart doesn't go super low at any point, you are very likely to be inside of the chunk with the buried treasure. So we're going to go to 9, which we're already at for our X chord, and 9 for our Z chord. And right here, like I said, you have to dig down sometimes. 1, 2, 3... And our fourth block should be buried treasure, which it is. But yeah. Cool. But yeah. Um, I hope that was a helpful video and was comprehensive. Um, yeah, I will... Oh, voice crack. I'll answer any uh, questions in the comments. Um, yeah.